here we have the Streamliner. It was uh, sold by Montgomery Wards. They called it the Supreme Reversible Rotary Model 30, but it was built by the National Sewing Machine Company, and they referred to it as an RBR2W. The RBR meaning Rotary Bobbin Reverse Sew. 2W, I am not sure the meaning of. Perhaps the, it was the second one that they built for Montgomery Wards and W's for Wards. In any event, I am going to do a little uh, tour and sewing demonstration on this machine. It is, uh, it dates from the late 1940s and was quite advanced for its time and it still sews a very good stitch and is very quiet and smooth running. It has uh, a piece of test cloth in it that you can see here. It has a number of stitches already in it left over from test stitching a lot of different machines and when they get too full of threads I throw them away and get another one. So here we go running the thing and you can see here that it runs very smoothly and quite quietly. That's smoothed out so that the camera can see it. I'm sewing black thread on blue so you probably can't see it too well. But we're going to stop here in a second and zoom in. And it does, you can see here, it goes backwards very handily and forwards. up again. Here we have the faceplate open. A black thread on a dark brown machine isn't going to show up too well so I will point out the thread path. The thread comes in through a little slot in the top of this little doodah here and wraps around it. It's like a little tension disc. Wraps around it and exits the bottom. That right there is a thumb screw. It has nothing to do with the threading. It comes down to here and this is the t main tension assembly. It's very unusual. The thread actually wraps 360 degrees all the way around before it exits out there, comes down, goes under, goes under this hook, back up, goes through the take-up arm from right to left, then it goes down through this eyelet down through the usual, usual eyelet above the needle and through the needle. And the other cool thing about this machine is everything in the thread path is slotted, including the take-up arm. You do not have to th thread anything, the thread th through any holes whatsoever except for in the needle, of course. And one other thing, the light bulb is here. You will observe two contacts here. They go into here. You don't want to stick anything in there because that is hot. And when you close this door, the light automatically comes on. The uh, only thing to be careful with that is the little board sometimes cracks and there's not, it's not an easy thing to fix. Here is a view of the back side, close up, showing the built-in, semi-built-in uh, motor that sort of bulges out. It's, a, it's an integral casting with the machine. And the uh, national standard terminal block, this is the power coming in, and the foot pedal connection is here. Here we have the friction drive wheel against the hand wheel and we'll power it up here for a moment and here's one final shot of the back side of the machine and we will still 
machine a little bit for you. And this, of course, is raises the presser foot. Okay, I am going to give a quick demonstration of how to wind a bobbin on this. It's pretty straightforward. If we go in here, we've got the thread, and we decide to use a little brighter colored thread here, a little bit of green. Goes from the spool down, 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 just through that little hook, and then goes back up to the bobbin that's be wound and as is usual for this type of machine the uh, <clears throat> there we go the uh, bobbin winder tire is put up against the hand wheel the uh, stop motion knob which you can see in the right hand side has been disengaged so that uh, the main mechanism won't run and you apply a little power to it. And it winds away. That noise is coming from the spool thread on top. And if you wind it far enough, it'll pop off automatically, but I like to stop them a little bit sooner than that. There we go.